morning, my friends. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion. We are en route to the beach. We're going to Manhattan Beach today. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. We're heading down Sepulveda right now. We're gonna go to Manhattan Beach and Redondo Beach. I wanna show you a couple of cool houses and places down here. I can see the beach water. Look at that ocean. We're looking for a pink house. We can't miss it. Oh, bummer. This was the address. It's no longer pink and it no longer resembles what it used to, but it used to have a big giant emoji up there beside the left window. I'll show you a photo of what it used to look like. I was hoping this would still be here because I was kind of thinking, I wonder if they change the emoji every once in a while depending on their mood, but looks like they probably moved out or they just have a blank attitude now, a blank emotion. All right, I know our next house is still here. I know that for sure. You can see there's some people out and about. Now we've made it over to some of these cool beach houses. I wanna show you one they call the mermaid house. So this interesting home nestled right here on this beautiful beach street you might think by looking at it would have some sort of medieval royalty or a witch living in there, but no, this is known as the Mermaid House of Manhattan Beach. This is really cool because this belongs to the sister of Eddie Munster, Butch Patrick, and she did all of this herself. Take a look at that. Look at the weather vane. You've got that dragon weather vane up there. And then look at how she did the seashell roof right there. Then all the way down to the lettering on the house and the front door has that castle-esque look. I love this. Now what's cool is that she has a business where she does these wonderful medieval looking keys. And she actually decorated the entire outside fence with I heard over thousands of shells, you can see, and hundreds of keys. So as you go all along the outer perimeter, not only is there all kinds of beautiful things to see inside that she's decorated, but the whole outside has little shells and beads and various things. Isn't that cool? It had to have taken, you know, some serious time because look at all that. It's all hand done. And it goes all the way around the house. Now you'll also notice that up there where the balconies are, check that out. Isn't that great? And then she takes her love for keys right to the front gate. This giant key. Isn't that great? Now, how I found out about this was um, Butch Patrick has a channel and he was showing her house. I had heard about this house, never had any clue that he was affiliated with it. And then I saw that and I said, I got to come out and share this with people, share his channel with people. Then, like I said, as you can see, it goes all the way around the outside, various formations, lines, the rocks. And then just randomly, various places, you'll see a little key. Really need to see a labor of love out here because these are some pretty expensive and well-designed houses and it's nice to see people putting a little extra touch to it. Well, speak of the devil, look who it is, Mr. Uh, Butch Patrick, but I don't know about the devil, but yes, I am, <laughs> I am here and it's, uh, what is the date today? The 16th? Yeah, yeah May, it is. May 16th, and I hope you're all doing well with this crazy pandemic, Corona-19, everything else you want to call it. I call it crazy. But I think, we're getting, I think we've turned the corner and the light's on the end of the tunnel, and I'm here in Manhattan Beach at my sister's house. Uh, you may or may not know about her company called Keys to My Castle, but she's based everything on her castle house. 
And uh, Jordan's down here checking out interesting Manhattan Beach domiciles. And my sister has got a very unique, wonderful fairy tale type feel to her house. So um, take a peek, go to her website, and stay safe. Now, Butch was just talking about his sister's key business, and she just gave me one. She let me choose. She has a couple of Munster themed ones. I got Woof Woof. It's also signed on the back, which signed the cast for me. That is so cool. And your name's Michelle, correct? I'm Michelle. And they direct they can buy directly from you. Keystomycastle.com. Awesome. Yeah. And you have one of the coolest houses here in Manhattan Beach. Thank you. There's and over 5,000 shells in the wall, and there's about 200 skeleton keys hidden in the wall. And who did all the work? Me. That is so cool. Destroyed my hands, but yeah, it took me about a month, but it's all around the house. Thank you for sharing your art with the community. Thank you. Pretty cool idea. Now since they officially opened the beaches, let's go take a look at the beach. People always ask me to go vlog Catalina. This is kind of what Catalina feels like, this feel. These type of houses and stuff as you walk around. Very nice community, but Catalina is just very, very pricey. Cool. He just said $25, I'm buying a car. Oh, look at this one. C'est la vie. Beautiful houses. If you can afford them. Awesome. I can't seem to find the beach. Oh. Oh, okay. It's that way. Check this out. This is unique. The painted rock. Kind of cool. So they do have these signs still out, even though the beaches are now open. They're not really packed, but people are out here. Looks like it's still a lot of people using it for just exercise, but there are people out there surfing and getting in the water, you can see. Take a look at the beachfront houses here. Especially those. Those should be in Italy. And they have a lifeguard on duty, so it's kind of getting back to, or starting to get a little bit back to normal. This area is very popular for celebrities, especially athletes, a lot of the Clippers, Lakers, a lot of volleyball players, soccer players all live down here in Manhattan Beach and Hermosa Beach. Monster surf party? Count me in. It's perfect, I wonder if Eddie Munster will be there. Looks like one of his wheels has seen better days. Yeah, see for all we know, this could have been Blake Griffin's beachside home. I know he had one here. This is kind of cool to see in a beach community on the outside of their apartment. The endless summer, except they changed it to endless bummer. Now for you Tarantino fans, I'm taking us to a little Tarantino history stop. All right, we're back out on Sepulveda Boulevard. Well, they've redone a little bit of this plaza, so it doesn't look exactly the same. But right here in 1985, a 22-year-old Quentin Tarantino got a job at a video rental store that he used to frequent called Video Archives. He ended up working here for five years. And um, one of the people, Roger Avery, who helped write uh, Pulp Fiction was also someone that Quentin worked with here. He got a job here. I mean, he was just a frequent customer and the guy who owned the place liked him and offered him a job and Quentin even said this really saved his life because it gave him some direction and he also said that this was, other than directing, this was the best job that he had ever had working in a video rental store because he could watch stuff, get really into things and while he was working here, he <laughs> managed to um, convince his other co-workers to be in his first feature-length film called My Best Friend's Birthday, and it um, basically he got them to help finance it. It cost $6,000, and it was deducted out of their checks over time, 
and the film ended up not getting completed I guess I mean it's it's available on YouTube to see but it, it was somehow it was destroyed and they didn't get the version that he wanted but while he was working here he ended up taking acting classes in Beverly Hills and then through there got um, well decided that he didn't really want to be an actor he'd rather be maybe a writer and then he got into more directing and then of course he made Reservoir Dogs and that wasn't necessarily a monster hit at first but it became a cult classic and everything he's done after that has just been super successful so the video store that he first started working at when he was 22 video archives would have originally been right here most of these look the same but it was all one big strip and I'll actually put a picture of Quentin coming back in um, I believe it was 92 93 something like that he came back and stood in front of this video archives and kind of see where it was now we are heading into Redondo Beach. Check out this great mural. Yep, you know you're at the beach when you see surfboard shops. There you can see the King Harbor. Here's a famous old school place, Eat at Joe's. So you can see that we've found our way looking at the athletic fields of Redondo Union High School. And right across the street is something really amazing, something quite magical. This amazing place is known as the Redondo Castle. And the reason I said it was magical is because throughout the time of its existence, many different magicians have lived here. In fact, in 2013, magician Brian Gillis and his partner Sizupan, they were both romantic partners and partners in illusion. They lived here and they used to host parties here allow people to come in and do tours and they would have different magical performances here. Look at this place, isn't it amazing? I don't know if you can tell, but some really amazing stained glass windows up there. So actually I just was talking to the homeowner and he was telling me that the original house here was built in the 1920s but that the whole castle edition was done in the 60s by a Scottish guy that bought the house and he brought a bunch of things from Scotland and added them onto the house and they said one of them was this giant 13 foot wooden door from a castle there from like a church or a castle he brought here and used as the door pretty cool one of those cool free things you can see when you're out visiting Sorry, I think I may have said that they moved in there in 2013, but they actually moved in in 2003. Lived there for 10 years, so they moved out in 2013. That's when their relationship ended. What was crazy is that Brian and Sizupan actually met at a stoplight. <laughs> they were actually at a stoplight here in Redondo Beach, and he saw her with her friends and said, where are you going? They said they were going to the beach. He said, can I come too? They went, became close, and um, then he taught her magic and she became part of the act. Pretty interesting. Now to show you one more thing before we leave this area. How cool is that house or apartment or whatever it is? It's like a lighthouse on the edge. Right there on the corner of it. That's amazing. That is the gate for the lighthouse. Looks like we had a birthday. He is practicing uh, safety with the mask and the gloves though. You do have to give him credit for that. You can see this restaurant here has a sign that says at 8 p.m. cheer for our workers. So I bet it gets kind of noisy around here at 8 p.m. Cool bird feeder. If you're looking for the Birkenstocks, this store has a salesman that can help you. From the Black Lagoon. Since I had recently done a vlog on Gary Shandling, I figured I'd show this. This is the Comedy and Magic Club. This is the 
comedy club down here in Hermosa Beach, Redondo Beach area. This was one of the places that Gary Shandling used to perform. This place is kind of known for being a place that likes clean comedy, so nothing dirty, no cussing, or not very much cussing. And it's also well known because pretty much every Sunday night for years, Jay Leno has been coming here and performing on the regular. Here you can see they were expecting a performance by Patrick Warburton that got canceled from Seinfeld, Rules of Engagement, Family Guy, Joe on Family Guy. Yeah, and as if comedians don't have enough problem with depression, now they don't have anywhere to perform, so hope all the comedians out there are doing well. Look at the door handles for the Comedy and Magic Club. Oh, here you go. Jay Leno, Select Sundays. It was quite often Sundays, <laughs> or most Sundays. So this is a blast from the past. The first two weeks I started vlogging, I did stand-up comedy at this place, Padone's Pizza. I think it never really got into the stand-up comedy stuff because I don't like repetition and stand-up is pretty much just doing the same stuff over and over, week after week, set after set. I liked vlogging because then you could do something different every day, so I kind of stuck with this. And I say I kind of stuck with it, but <laughs> reality hit me today. Somebody had just moved into the apartment next to me. I'd never met him. Today I was coming back from a walk with Ja. They were leaving their apartment and they said, how's it going Jordan, I love your videos. Nice to meet you and live next to you. So, <laughs> the jig is up. Oh, awesome, take a look at this house. Great job. I like the octopus at the top too. See that one right up there? That's awesome. All right, I think it's time to head back to Hollywood. Check this place out. It's WrestleFest again. We've got one in this corner, the Joster, and in this corner, Robert. Are you gonna get Jaw Robert or what? Okay, I guess this is just the way in. You guys aren't gonna wrestle today? No? Yes? Are you going to play with Jaw? Well, where's he at? No, <laughs> I guess not. When I started editing the footage, I noticed this was a little blurry so you couldn't see Wolf Wolf, but that was nice of her to give me this, and I wanted to make sure you got to see how great the quality is. Can't wait to make a key out of this. All right, my friends, we're gonna call it a day. I hope you all enjoyed that vlog. I actually was not planning on doing any of that today. I just hopped in the car and started driving and started putting together as I was going. I hope you all liked it. I had a great day. I wanna thank Colleen Para, Amber Holly, Jack Stahl, Crystal Joyce, Joey DeWitt, William, Susie Perry, M. King, and Sandy Parrish Edwards for making contributions to my channel or becoming Patreons. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you all next time. Have a great night, and goodbye.